to start with because I want to be in the zone with a, this person here, all right? And so I don't want to have to think about things and take my attention away from Carolina while I'm working, okay? But we will have questions and answer afterwards, okay? Now, um, what kind of work do you do? Just give me an idea of whether you're sitting all day or no. what you do. Um, I'm not sitting. I mean, I do use the computer, but I move around a lot. Oh, okay. okay. And I'm not, you know, I'm not like sitting for more than two hours. Okay. Right. 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 And do you have any um, physical problems, backaches, or anything like that? No, I just want to go to yoga. <laughs> After okay. yoga. <laughs> okay. Right. Because um, it is important to know if people do have problems. All right, um, but I'm not here to cure, cure people's problems. My job is to help people observe what they're doing to themselves and how they can stop and think in order to prevent what they're doing, okay? So I'll just explain a little bit about Alexander and uh, what he discovered. He was about 23 years old, a young actor, passionate about Shakespeare and gradually the more he worked with this he started losing his voice while he was on the stage and he had a very important part to play in a couple of weeks and he went to the doctor and the doctor said to him well don't talk for two weeks so he didn't talk for two weeks after two weeks, the day that he was meant to start reciting, he was talking to his colleagues and friends, no problem. He went on the stage and halfway through, he lost his voice completely. So he went to a specialist and the specialist said, <coughs> your uvula, you know the little thing that hangs down at the back of the throat? It's, it's extra long. So we need to cut it because it's irritating the back of your throat. So Alexander said, but surely if my voice is all right while I'm talking normally, there must be something that I am doing to myself that's making my voice go while I'm on the stage. So the specialist said, well, perhaps that's so. So Alexander asked, well, can you tell me what I'm doing? He said, no, I can't. So Alexander left. Fortunately, so he went home and he set up three mirrors and started talking, observing himself. Didn't notice a lot, and then he wanted to recite. And he noticed that the moment he wanted to start reciting, he was doing. All right, so I thought, ah, I don't seem to be doing that while I'm talking normally. But gradually he found out he did, but to a much lesser degree. So he realized that the moment that he wanted to speak, he would go. So he was stiffening the back of his neck, which pulled his head back off that joint there. So the weight of his head was going back and down, which pushed that forward. So this end of the spine was going towards this end. So all the curves became exaggerated. And so a lot of pressure is going through the spine and through the discs. This affected his breathing, so he couldn't breathe as well. So he had to find a way of preventing what he was doing. So instead of doing this, he started doing this. But then he realized that depressed the larynx as well. So he had to find a way of preventing what he was doing that was interfering, but without making lots of muscular effort. Also, he realized that it was with everything he did, he was interfering with his head and neck. When he went to sit, he would do this. When he went to get up, he would do this. When he asked for the telephone, they didn't have computers in those days, <laughs> but these days, 
people are on the computer and they're going. So constantly, people are creating all this tension here and shortening stature, which affects everything else down below, okay? So it's about what we're doing in all our daily activities and how we react to different situations. Because sometimes when people annoy you, it's like, we are reacting by stiffening. Oh, that's crazy. And so if you think of this psychophysical, because the mind and body work together, you can't separate them. <coughs> And it's observing how we are reacting to different situations. So if somebody is doing something or saying something that you don't like, and we start going, it means that I'm allowing that person to have more control over me than I. So it's, first of all, with the technique, is observing what we're doing. Because if we don't know what we're doing, we can't prevent it, okay? So, it's a technique that we apply in all our daily activities, okay? Now, am I talking slow enough for you that you can understand? Okay. Because once I start teaching, I'm in the middle So what I would like you to do is just stand up, okay? Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, because people are sitting and standing all day long, okay? And so what I'd like you to do is sit down as you normally sit down, but just see if you notice what you do with your head and neck. So, all right? So what did you actually notice? You like this. Great! Yeah. Now, what I'd like you to do is stand up and again, see if you notice what you want. Yeah, you do. Right? Yeah, you yeah. Do. yeah. Cool. Okay. And you see, when people get older, they get shorter and shorter. Yeah. And it's not because they're getting older, it's because every time they do something, they're contracting. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So, the reason we work with a chair is because everybody sits and stands mm -hmm. many times a day. So, if you will allow me to put my hands on your our head here. Now it's important to ask permission to put hands on because we're not wearing white coats and if you all of a sudden you bring your hands up here it's like <laughs> okay so it's good to get ask permission okay so the reason I want to put my hands up here is to prevent your head from coming back and down okay okay, okay so we're not going anywhere just for the moment oh, that's good. now Bring your awareness to your feet and just make sure that you've got weight on your heels and the walls of the feet. Fantastic, because what was happening was you had weight on the balls of the feet. Yeah. Because when people shorten, they do, they throw the pelvis forward. I do that all the time. I go like this all the time. Yeah. Great, that's fantastic. You know it. Yeah, okay. I do, I do. When I think. Yeah. <laughs> So that's increasing the curves right. there, okay? Right. So it's important to be aware of your heels and the balls of the feet mm -hmm. because then you know you're in balance and you cannot fall, all right? Mm -hmm. So don't care about that chair. I don't care whether you get, to get there, but what we want is to prevent you from doing it, all right? That's Leave that alone and just don't do anything here. So, without making any muscular effort, just give a thought of your head just being up away from your hips. It's just a thought. That's it. And stay balanced over the feet. Now, what we want is your head away from your hips so that we don't shorten between here and here. But we have joints in our legs that allow us to lower. So, very gently, go slowly, just sink your head away from the hips, very gently let the knees bend, but stay on the heels and the balls of the feet. Bend the knees, keep going, go slow, 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 don't care about that shape. That's it, slow, that's it, there you go. 
That's it. Good. You see, mm -hmm. and what's happened is you've kept your length. Okay. Can you feel that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> there you go. It's it's preventing unnecessary contraction. Okay. Okay. And because you stayed balanced on on the feet, you didn't look for the chair with your bottom. Because people look for the chair and do that. You pull the head back and bottom goes there. Okay. That's it. So as you're sitting there, again, without making any muscular effort, just give a thought of your head, just being up away from your hips. And it doesn't matter if you don't feel anything. It doesn't matter if you don't feel it going up. It's just the thought of preventing. Now I'm going to move you forward I'm not going to get you up, but I'm just going to move you. But we want the head to lead. Mm -hmm. So you allow me to guide you. So we're going to keep that length by your head away from your hips. And it's your head that takes you forward, so you keep that length. That's it. And I'm going to bring you back. That's it. Now we're going to continue. So don't. <coughs> You don't have to push with your legs, mm -hmm. but we're going to come over the feet. Now, when you're standing, your head has to go above your feet. Mm -hmm. So here's your head, so that's where you want your head to go. But often, we go down to push ourselves up. It seems a bit crazy, but a lot of us have done that, right? So, think, here's my head, well, I want it to go there. So allow me to guide you. So that's the head that leads and the body follows. That's it. Now, again, just check that you've got weight on your heels. That's it, and the balls of the feet. Now, you see, because your head's going up more, your trunk <coughs> is following. <coughs> so you can't push your, hel your pelvis forward. It's more difficult, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, there's the chair. But you see, normally, as soon as we think of chair, our muscles get excited mm -hmm. and want to do what they normally do. So if you just pause for a moment and just leave your neck quiet and think your head away from your hips. That's it. And very gently, let the knees ease forward. Stay balanced over the feet, go slow. Knees and let me guide you. That's it. So your head's taking you forward. Keep going. Knees. That's it. There you go. It's so simple, but it isn't easy. <laughs> That's it. That's nice. You see, the chair gives you support. So it's not about trying to sit up, mm. it's about stopping pulling down. Mm. Because often people collapse into the chair and they think, oh, I've got to sit up. And then they pull back in, creating lots of tension. Okay, so you just think your head up there. Nothing for you to do. Now I'm just going to take your shoulder. Again, there's nothing for you to do, but you just think of your head away from the bottom. That's it. And you see, for us to function in the best possible way, we need our full height and width so that everything inside has a chance to function in a better way. That's it. Good. So just bring your awareness to the tips of your shoulders and again, without making muscular effort, just give a thought of your shoulders just being allowed to stay away from each other. So then you'll be preventing the shoulders from coming round and down in the front. 
to get you up, it just pulls, because as soon as we get the stimulus to do something, those muscles want to do what they normally do, so it's very important, as soon as you get an idea to do something, it's just a pause, so that the muscles are calm, and you can think your head away from your hips, so you prevent doing all that with your head. So your head away from your hips and your head is going to lead. So you want your head going from here to up above your feet. So it's not pulling the head back, but it's letting the head lead. That's it. There you go. You okay? Mm -hmm. It may feel very strange and you may feel like a robot. Mm -hmm. That's it. So just keep thinking your head away from the hips. That's it. There you go. That's it. Great. So you continue thinking up. So even the thought of going down, pause. Think of your head going up away from the hips because it's your legs that allow you to lower. So you think up to gently let the knees go forward, keeping the heels down as the knees go forward, and now we let the head take you forward, that's it, there you go. Keep the head forward on its joint, that's it, that's it. Good. You see, it's very different mm -hmm. to when you started. I don't know whether you can feel mm -hmm. the difference, but I'm sure the students can see the difference. Not students, they're in it. Sorry, teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Both things. That's it. Now, see, you can apply this to anything in your life. And a very big stimulus in people's lives is a mobile phone. Mobile phone go. Hello? sending lots of texts, pulling the head back and down. But you see, you have joints in your arms, so you can bring the phone up to you. You don't have to... Does that make sense? Yes. When you think about cleaning your teeth, drinking and eating. Mm. It's fascinating going to a restaurant watching people eat, because with each mouthful it's Instead of chicken. Exactly. So it's learning to apply it in all their little daily activities. That's it. So even the thought of getting up, just pause, just so the muscles are quiet, so that they're not getting agitated to do what they normally do. You think, well, here's my head. I want it to go above my feet. So the head leads, the body follows. That's it. I'm getting taller. <laughs> That's it. Great. That's nice. And you see, because you have more length, mm -hmm. your front and back are following your head, so your shoulders have got support. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you can feel that. Yeah. They're not as heavy. But you see, when we're like this, there's no support for the shoulders, so life becomes a drag. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. And then we carry heavy things, and that pulls us down more. Mm. But 
to see here, these shoulders are supported, your arms can just hang, they're not dragging you down. Mm. That's it. So, even the thought of going down, just pause. Take your whole head up. That's it. Gently let the knees go forward, but stay over the feet so you're in balance, you won't fall. That's it, there you go, that's it, that's it, that's it, lovely. Good. That's nice. So, we're going to get up. So again, just pause. And it's just leaving the neck quiet as you direct your head. Let the head lead, the body follow. That's it. Good. So now, we're going to do some work on the table. All right, so I'll just pull the table out. Sit there. Sit down. Yes. And then we're going to put your head in these books. You may need to go down a little bit further that way. That's it. Oh, not too far because you're on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. There you go. Okay. So let me have the head. That's it. <clears throat> Good. That's it. Now purpose of lying down like this is something you can do at home, you can do it on the floor, is because often when we're working all day, we um, come home and we're very tired and we think, oh I must relax, but then we just collapse. <laughs> so lying like this, it's allowing ourselves time to stop, but in a, harm in a less harmful way, because it allows the body to undo instead of relaxing and putting down more. Okay? So, <coughs> that's it. Good. You okay there? Yeah. You comfortable? Yeah, right. Now, it's important to explain what you're going to do when you come behind the head. Because if you just go straight behind the head, they don't know what you're going to do. So, it's nice to know what the person's going to do when they're behind you. So, what I'm going to do is put my hands on your head, just like I did in the upright, but, uh, and I'll be directing your head away from your hips, so, okay? Because I did have one young teacher and every time he would he'd go into monkey, he'd start breathing heavy. And with one of his pupils, he went behind her, didn't tell her what he was going to do, and he's going... And I said, no. Because she didn't know what he was doing and making all this huffing and puffing noise. <laughs> so it's, it's important because we're not wearing white coats. If you have a white coat, it can make a difference. That's it. So I'm just going to take your head. So nothing for you to do. So just think of your neck quiet. And again, without making muscular effort, give the thought of your head away from your hips. And it doesn't matter if you don't feel that anything happen. The important thing is that the direction is there to prevent what you normally do. That's it. There we go. That's it. Okay, it's not too strong. Mm -hmm. Good. So I always tell people where I'm going to put my hands and what I'm going to do, okay? On the first list, anyway. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this shoulder and, and direct it like I did in the chair, okay? Now, if anything hurts, it's not my intention to cause you pain, but just feel free to say, all right. That's it. So I'm going to lift this shoulder so it's my work. You don't have to help me. And just leave things quiet. That's it. This is called non 
we're doing. <laughs> you see, we're all little doers at heart. And then we want to learn to do things, to change things, but the trouble is we do too much anyway. So it's about learning to stop the unnecessary doing. So the right thing does itself. So you can just bring your awareness to the very red tips of the shoulders. Just the thought of them just staying away from each other. That's it. That's it. You see, and I don't really feel anything changing. It does, it does. What can you feel? Well, this is obviously going out this way. Mm -hmm. And um I don't know, it's like if it was squaring or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay. You think you have your shoulders back and then they go back more. And it's <clears throat> because, you see, normally they come round in front. We don't want to just pull them back. But we want to think them away from each other. Because if we just pull them back, we then narrow here. So by just thinking them away from each other, you prevent them from coming round and down in front, but you're not making lots of muscular effort to sit up straight and pull the shoulders back. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't be able to keep that for long. Now I'm going to take this arm. Now bring your awareness to the very, very, very tips of your fingers. And just think of them being allowed to go away from your elbow. And if you think, of a piece of elastic. When you want to lengthen a piece of elastic, you have to have the two ends directed. So your elbow is here, so that can stay here. But if you think the tips of the fingers away from your elbow, it's asking for some length. That's it. That's it. Good. But you see, you're not trying to stretch by doing. It's thinking and allowing. So again, think through to the tips of those fingers. That's it. Good. So, I don't suppose you had any idea what you were going to... At all. <laughs> That's it. So. Again, it's my job. You don't have to do anything here. You let me lift it for you. That's it. And again, just bring your awareness to the tips of the shoulders. Just the thought of them staying away from each other. And again, it doesn't matter if they don't go anymore. What you're doing is preventing the unnecessary contraction. That's it. There you go. So again, see I like to touch every little finger because most of us, we go around and we can't feel our bits, which just carry this body around. And so it's hard to direct something if we don't get a sense of it. So that's why I always touch, touch the shoulders. Oh, that's part of the shoulders, okay. Tips of the fingers, so just think the tips of the fingers directing away from the elbow. That's it. And you see, she's a very good student mm -hmm. because she didn't react and go and try to lengthen. So, you're a pretty good student. <laughs> That's it. So again, think, it's like this is the end of the elastic. You think tips of the fingers away from the elbow. That's it. You see, and even if you 
lie down on the floor for five or ten minutes, just with your knees up, thinking your head away from your hips. It's amazing the difference it can make, especially when you've had a day at work and you're meant to go out to the dinner and socialize or something. That's it. Continue thinking the tips of the fingers away from the elbow. That's it. Good. So now, having lengthened your arms, you better lengthen your legs. Okay, I'll take your head first. So again, just leaving the neck quiet and thinking your head away from your hips. So I hope I'm not pulling your hair. Mm. That's it. That's it. Okay, I'm not too strong. Good. So the more I'm giving my directions, they're getting stronger in me. So I want to make sure that it's not too strong in the person. So I always ask if it's too strong. Normally it isn't, but the, I, you see, I have to work on myself. I'm the most important one, sorry. <laughs> but, so that I can give you the best experience mm. as possible. That's it, so it's my work, good. But you see, that was good because you recognized <laughs> you were reacting mm. to the stimulus of me lifting this leg. Mm -hmm. So you let me do the work. That's it. Good. Up. You let me do it. Uh, good. That's it. You see, we little doers at heart. Yeah. That's nice. So, as I lower your leg, just think your head away. That's it. And bring your awareness to your heel. Now, without making any muscular effort with your leg, just give a thought of your heel away from your head and your head away from your heel. It's like an invitation to say, how about coming here? If it wants to go, it will go, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's it. That's good. You okay? Yeah. Okay, it's my work. So I'm just going to bring your knee up. That's it. Good. So just give a thought of your knee up away from your hip. And very gently lower this. That's it. So you can think your head away from your hips. The backs of the knees away from your hips or away from your back because then it's asking for undoing between these two parts. It's like, again, like the bits of elastic, you've got the ends directing, and the knees away from the heels. So it's asking for length all the way through. Well done. See, in Alexander terms, we call that inhibition. Because we want to inhibit our habitual reaction. That's it. Good. So again, just give a thought of your head away from your hips. And now, bring your awareness to your heel. And without making any muscular effort with your leg, Think the heel away from your head, 
and head away from the heel. So it's just keeping it very simple. But often we tell a person to direct and then we start chatting. And when we start chatting, they can't focus on their directions, okay? That's it. There we go. Good. That's it. So our knees going up away from the hip. And as you gently lower, keep the knee up to lower. That's it. to get you up so just pause because having got a little bit more length we don't want to contract unnecessarily to get up so we'll get you up on this side so with your eyes only just look to your right just with the eyes and then very gently keeping the neck quiet let your head excuse me i think that's mine don't worry about it it's right. not a problem it's a stimulus for us not to <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> now but you see what was good you didn't stiffen your neck mm. when you mentioned the phone so that was pretty good <laughs> now i feel like right with my eyes right yes and now, very gently, leaving the neck quiet, just let your head follow your eyes. Go to slowly, 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 that's it. Now, with this hand, you're going to bring it up over your shoulder. Now, and direct the knees over here. That's it, bring your feet off the table and push yourself up with that hand and just pause there for a moment, all right? Because sometimes, People feel a little light heady when they get up. <laughs> How are you feeling there? Yeah. Okay. So just pause for a moment. Now, you can use your hands to help you off if you want to. Mm -hmm. But think up away from your hands, okay? Because often when we want to use our hands, we pull down to push up. Mm. With a bar when we want to go upstairs, people pull down. But they want to go up, which is a bit crazy. Hmm. And old people, when they're given a cane, it's an invitation to pull down more. So they're dependent on the cane. But if they thought up from that cane, it gives them support, but they're not dependent on it. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So even though you use your hands to help you off there, you think your head is staying up. And then just very gently slide off. That's it. Right. Okay. okay, so here's the funny thing chair. about this. Right. <laughs> but that was good because you said, oh, I'm going to think about this. Right. That's it. So you really get a sense of those feet so that you're in balance. You haven't got your pelvis throwing you forward. All right? So it's staying balanced over the feet all the way through that movement. Mm. So you don't have to think of a chair, because if you're in balance, you cannot fall. Mm. And if you were in balance all the way through the movement, and somebody happened to take the chair away, it wouldn't matter, because you're not searching for the chair. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so even the thought of going down, just leave the neck quiet, and the thought of your head just staying 
forward and up there. Very gently let the knees ease forward, stay over the feet all the way through. And your head takes you forward. Knees, knees, that's your bottom. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay, I got it. Good. Good. All right. That was great because that's the stimulus of the chair. I was thinking, chair, where are you? <laughs> all right. But you noticed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, it's waking up to what we do. That's fantastic. That's it. Right. So, knees. That's it. That's it. There you go. All right. Great. Okay. Now, obviously, if you're going to sit for a long time, you don't always want to sit on the edge of the chair. Right. So, I would, I would very gently, if I was sitting on the edge of the chair, and I wanted to move back, I think up off the hands and slide back. Mm. All right? Very <coughs> good. Mm -hmm. Now, be careful with what you wanted to do. Yeah, I did, I did. It's terrific. <laughs> you do that all the time. That's right. <laughs> and you see? I feel like it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they do they pack like that. <laughs> well, that's how a lot of humans eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but if you think of the weight of a head, mm. like five, six kilos. Mm -hmm. Now, when the head is in balance on top there, it works to go up for you to go up. But once we start pulling that weight back and down, we've got all the weight of the head pushing the neck forward. So all our curves of the spine become exaggerated mm. and people get slip discs and all sorts of things. So it's keeping that head forward enough in its little joint but it's not pulling back. And then up. That's it. Now, just the thought of standing up just pause because that's the stimulus mm. on your muscles. Say, ah, oh, great, here we go. So it's taking that time and think, I'll just leave my neck quiet as I direct my head. And it's the head that leads. There you go. Terrific. Mm. You see, you didn't pull it back. Mm. Now you're going to go down again. Up. All right, but pause. All right, okay. All right. <laughs> But you see, you're learning about mm. stimulus and reaction. Mm. <laughs> right. Uh, the head that's going up there, stand forward on its joint, over the feet, don't care about that chair. There you go. Terrific. Right. <laughs> you see, that's very, very different. That's it. So, again, you're going to get up. So, pause. Here's my head, that's where I want it to go. So leave my neck quiet, keeping that head staying forward on that little joint. Look, it's going up, that's it. Up is easier than down, for whatever reason. Well, yeah, some people find the opposite. Really? Everybody's different. So hold head up. Yeah. Now, as you let the knees go forward, keep thinking more on your head. Right. That's it, so it's like the elastic. There you go, terrific. And you see, throughout that movement, because you're thinking your head away from your hips, and your knees are going away from your hips and away from your heels, huh. your body is undoing through the process from standing to sitting. Uh -huh. So you don't have to relax things and try to let it go, because often people let go, but when they start moving again, they tighten up and do what they normally do. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you're going to get up. So there's the stimulus. So see if you can leave those legs alone because they'd love to do a little push. Mm -hmm. Can you get a sense that they would want to kind of... Yeah. Right, so you just leave them quiet. It's your head that leads. The body follows and the legs will... Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so, this is your head. This is your back. <laughs> okay. Okay? <laughs> See, it's learning a little bit about her anatomy. <laughs> That's it. Sir. That's it. Good. See, it's good to have a sense of 
humour about these things. <laughs> because it's not about right and wrong. No, no, no. That's it. So take your head away from your hips. And as you let the knees ease forward, stay on the heels as well. Keep thinking your head away from the hips all the way through, all the way through. That's it, all the way through. Now even the thought of getting up, this is your head, it's the head that leads. So leave your legs quiet. Let your head lead. There you go. Terrific. Now you're going to walk. Now the thing is, right, I don't know if you could sense that. There was a part of me that wanted to send the pelvis forward. Yeah. Because most people start walking by doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, in order to walk, you need to be able to stand on one leg. Mm -hmm. Because you can't send a leg forward mm. without standing on the other leg. But what people either do is do that to send the arm forward, or they do that. So that or that. But what I want you to do is to think up. Now, which leg would you like to send forward first? This one. Okay. So very gently keep thinking up over onto this leg. Over onto this leg. That's it. Now get a sense of this foot so you feel secure. And the moment you want to send that knee forward, you keep thinking up and that foot down. That's it. There you go. Right, okay. I mean the knee forward. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. That was my fault. Let, just the knee. Send the knee and let the knee take the foot. Ah, oh, okay. All right? That was my fault. I didn't no, 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 no. That's it. So you're coming up off this leg. Knee forward. That's it. There you go. That's it. Just send the other knee forward and walk. Oh. That's it. I don't feel like a robot. At the beginning. At the beginning. That's it. Just keep thinking up. That's it. And pause. Mm -hmm. Now there's the chair. A wonderful stimulus. Mm -hmm. And you know what I used to think? If it was someone who would annoy me, I think, here comes that stimulus. And I would imagine the word stimulus written across their chest. Mm -hmm. And then I would think, thank you for this stimulus. What an opportunity for me to change. <laughs> because having things like this in our lives, if we can start recognizing how we're reacting, it gives us an opportunity to change because it's not that thing or person, it's our reactions to it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Right, did you notice what you wanted to do there? No, I didn't. I put this hand up. What I wanted to do your little uh, <laughs> chicken. The chicken. Tick, tick, tick. That's it, hold your head. That's it. So it's nothing to do with the chair. Stay over the feet. Gently let the knees go forward, but stay on the heels. Your head takes you forward. That's it, knees, that's your bottom. Knees. That's it, that's it. Good. See, it's learning a little bit of your anatomy. Mm -hmm. Because we all love to reach for the chair at the bottom. Right. So the head leads. Now this is your head and this is your back. So it's the head that leads, the body follows. Do a little less with the legs because they want to okay. do a lot more. That's it. Good. And just think up to walk. That's it. Just walk normally. But you're going up to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we we'll leave you up there. <laughs> All, right. All right? So I don't know if you want to say anything that you experienced. Uh, it's really interesting. It really is. Because um, um, I go to yoga. Mm -hmm. And then there's, and I've noticed like a lot of dif uh, difference in body posture. But it's like, I, probably because we don't have a one-to-one -one class. This part, first of all, the neck does sort of go out and it's like, oh, this is what they say in yoga and I can never do. Because <laughs> they always say, separate your head and, and you're not supposed to like bend over, you're supposed to send your head out. And I felt it, it was like incredible, I said it can't go, can't go up any further, but it does. And then the, the shoulder part, they teach you how to show, like throw your shoulders back, 
but the way you did it was more natural. It wasn't so strained. Because when they tell you to throw them back, you, you feel see, like you're like like this. And, and that's what Alexander calls doing. We're not preventing. Yeah. We're doing something different. It's, but it's the idea of separating the shoulders instead of throwing them back and down is a lot more like it feels comfortable. It doesn't feel so strained as you know what you have to do in yoga. And then that C part. In yoga, you throw your bum back because like this is what they want you to do. And it is like it hurts and that doesn't Ooh. hurt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really Good. interesting actually. So I really appreciate you coming. Thanks a lot. Because it's better to have somebody who knows absolutely well, nothing. I have no idea. <laughs> that's, 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 gonna do. that's fantastic. So the important thing about this is as you go out into the outside world, just start observing how you react to various things. Mm. I'll try to keep my head up. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now I go cat go, but don't do Step on my blue face. Thing that you're gonna do, but I'm a honey, they hold my.